So welcome back again. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is motors. Uh, so obviously this picture is very outdated. Um, you can see things in here like cassette tapes. Uh, but the point is that motors are all around us. Um, if you look at just a car, I mean obviously there's the engine, which is the main thing there. Uh, but there's all kinds of like small little automotive um, motors in here from sliders to windows to door locks. There's a lot of little motors. Uh, this is just kind of one example, uh, but there are motors that are everywhere. And today we're going to talk about motors and how we're going to use them in this class. Uh, we've already kind of looked at in the past um, electrically what a motor looks like, you know, why we needed snubber diodes, um, things like that. Not not the concern today, right? So this this is not uh, what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about kind of how they work internally um, and then how you control it. So it's not the electrical side. We're going to talk about three different types of motors. Uh, we're going to talk about one called a brush DC motor. Um, those we'll typically use, we'll actually say gearhead brush DC motors. Uh, we'll talk about stepper motors uh, and kind of how they work and what their advantages are. Um, and then finally servo motors and kind of what they are. So those are the three videos we're going to look at. Uh, obviously this one's going to be about uh, DC motors. Uh, whenever I say DC motors, I actually mean brush DC motors. Um, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, so the concepts that all of these are based on are electromagnets. Uh, the idea of an electromagnet is that if you have a wire um, and you have current uh, flowing through it, uh, you can generate a magnetic field. Um, and if you take a wire and you coil it around something, uh, so let's say you know you have some piece of metal and you know you coil a wire around that piece of metal, if you put current in one direction, uh, you know, you'll create a north and a south pole on that piece of metal. Um, however, if you put current through the other direction, um, you know, you would switch which side was north and south. So essentially you can create magnets uh, by using electricity, um, and that's the fundamental principle that drives all of the motors we're going to talk about. We're not talking about gas-powered motors, we're talking about electric motors, and they're all based on making little electromagnets. Uh, how they do's that use that concept is different. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is a brushed uh, DC motor. A brushed DC motor has uh, permanent magnets on the outside. So its permanent magnets um, are on the outside. They just are just regular old magnets. And then the inside um, is an electromagnet. Uh, this inside electromagnet, if you, your eyes are really, really good, um, you can see that there's little brushes on the shaft. Um, and what they do is they connect to a wire, so that's the commutator I think is the term. Um, it connects to a wire and it creates an electromagnet in the middle. Um, and the way they work is they're kind of always unhappy, right? Um, so if the outside has a, you know, a north and a south, um, then when the magnet is right here, um, like it becomes a north um, and a south, and so it's unhappy, um, and so it begins to like shift uh, to get away from that unhappy spot. Um, and so then you know it's going around, and it's got a north here, and it's starting to get happier, um, and it's got a south here, and it's starting to get happier. And then as soon as it gets to somewhere like here, it shifts on it again. Um, so instead of becoming a south, um, the commutators will will shift far enough. Uh, that it makes a different connection. Uh, so there was kind of like a spot of no connection, but it'll, it'll change. Um, and instead of being like a north-south where it's happy, um, it gets sad again. Um, and it kind of becomes a north and south uh, before you know it. Um, and so the way they work is you apply power and it continually spins. Um, and it's um, always trying to get happier. There's all kinds of videos that you could watch around about these things. Um, I won't make you watch this one, um, but these videos that are, are nice on YouTube because they'll do things like they'll tell you the terms as well, um, and they have cute little animations. All right, I'll let this play for a minute. So it's telling you how the uh, connection to uh, power goes, uh, the names of these things like the commutators and armatures and the brushes. Um, they're fun to watch. If you've got some spare time, watch one of these videos. Um, but the concept is quite simple. There's an electromagnet in the middle uh, that's spinning, um, and as it's spinning, it shifts polarity, and that keeps it always unhappy, and it's always spinning trying to get happy. 
Uh, so just to kind of uh, do a quick recap, see if you could answer this on a brush DC motor. The electromagnet, is it the moving part of the stationary? Uh, and the permanent, is it the moving part of the stationary? Uh, pretty easy on a uh, brush DC. So the electromagnet moves um, and the permanent magnet is stationary. Uh, so the way that you use these, if you want to go in a single direction, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to use a MOSFET you know, or a Darlington or a BJT. Uh, typically I like to use MOSFETs. Um, and that's kind of what we talked about already, you know, there's a load. If you want to go in bi-direction, uh, you use an H-bridge and we've talked about that. Pros and cons, just to remind you of them, um, the MOSFET can do very high torques, or sorry, very high currents, um, like up to two amps. Uh, whereas the H bridges that we have are limited to like half an amp. Um, so essentially you could drive something, you know, four times stronger or more with a MOSFET. So if you can get away in your project with single direction, uh, that's awesome because you can use a MOSFET and they're beefy. If you have to have bi-direction, um, then, you know, your number one concern is going to be blowing up your H bridge chip. So you're going to be concerned about blowing it out. Um, so that's the two ways that we use them. Um, as far as how you control these things, they are controlled by voltage. Um, so the more voltage that a motor gets, the faster it goes. Um, within its operational range, it will actually be quite linear. Um, so if you wanted to make it go slowly, uh, you know, you could give it like 3 volts. Um, and then if you wanted to make it go faster, you could give it like 4 or 5 volts. A lot of motors are, you know, like six volt motors, and they'll work pretty well, um, you know, like around that range. Uh, some are twelves. Um, I mean, you can buy twenty fours even. Uh, but so long as you stay somewhere in their range, you can overdrive them. More on that later. Um, then they'll be pretty happy. And if you wanted to go faster or slower, you could change the uh, voltage. Now, if you look at these numbers, these are actually kind of typical things. Um, you'll notice that the RPMs are in thousands, right? So a motor by itself typically is most efficient when it goes very, very fast, right? So like, like really, really fast, like thousands of RPMs. Um, so to make it useful for your projects, you almost always want to put a gearhead on there. Um, so whenever I say DC motor, I typically really mean gearhead brushed DC motor, right? I just I quit saying the whole thing. Um, so those are kind of the speeds. Now it turns out that actually changing the voltage is hard uh, because you'd have to have the you know an analog amplifier to do it, um, and it actually turns out to be quite hard. So nobody does that. Um, and what people do instead is what's called pulse width modulation. So you send it a signal. Um, so let's say like this is a signal from your pick um, to a MOSFET. Um, you send it a signal that is only high like a certain percentage of the time. So let's say that um, you know you've got a five volt um, here, um, but this five volt signal is high only ten percent of the time. This is effectively like um, you know half a volt, right? Um, and then here it's on fifty percent of the time, so it's like two point five volts. Um, and then here it's on ninety five percent of the time, so it's you know four point five volts. So the nice thing is that if you want to do speed control, you don't have to have an analog amplifier. Um, you can just, from a microcontroller, use pulse width modulation uh, to control how much voltage it's getting um, and thereby affecting the speed of the motors. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing about this is it actually gives you more torque when you do it too. If you were to actually send a motor, say, half a volt, um, it would turn slowly um, but also have really terrible torque. Um, whereas if you send it 5 volts at a 10% uh, duty cycle, it would actually go that same speed but with a lot more torque. So PWM is not only easier, it actually is much better as well. Uh, just to mention it, the frequencies are typically in hertz. Um, you can actually, there's a big range that will work. If you start going like really slow, like let's say you start to go like you know, 10 hertz or less, um, you might like see the motor like start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. You would actually see it like, you know, kind of jerky. Um, but as soon as you get up over to like, you know, 100 hertz, I mean, you're, never, you're not going to see 100 hertz. You might not see 10. Um, but to be honest, there's no harm at going at like, you know, 2 kilohertz or, you know, 20 kilohertz. At some point you'll hear it, uh, which is no good. Um, so you want to stay out of the audible range. Um, but if you send a really fast, like, you know, 2 kilohertz signal, um, it's going to behave 
very nicely. And so that's how we're going to actually control the speed um, on our DC motors, and it's pretty cool. Uh, just to mention some things uh, to warn you about with motors, um, <clears throat> you can damage motors. Uh, the number one time when, when they uh, damage is when they stall. Um, DC motors are really nice and then you get so much torque um, and if you you know apply resistance to the shaft it'll slow down and you'll actually get more torque which is cool um, so like to stop something is really hard because it gets more and more torque the slower it goes however the current uh, shoots through the roof especially if you if you like if you grab it and stall it uh, the current just gonna spike um, and that um, can damage your transistor um, also, I mentioned you can overdrive a motor. So if you drive, if you purchase a motor that's called a six volt motor, um, you can overdrive it, right? Like um, I'm not saying you should, but nine volts is usually pretty safe. Um, driving it at 12 is starting to get pretty dangerous. You can drive it at 12; that's fine, as long as you're sure it will never stall. Um, so I just kind of tell you some things you can do and cheat there. Uh, but you are likely to break motors if you play that game too much. So I just thought I'd tell you about that. Uh, where we actually buy these, um, so I've got some some sites that I can go to here. Um, I'll just kind of open some of them up. By the way, this is just a link uh, from the course or from the project website. Um, there's a bunch of places that, that help you buy parts. Um, if I went to all electronics and I wanted to look for motors, I'd just grab it off the side here. Um, and let's say I wanted uh, DC gear motors. This is like my favorite page. Uh, these are all used motors, um, and so you won't find specs like with quantitative numbers most of the time, sometimes you will. Um, usually you'll find things like has a lot of torque or has a little bit of torque, uh, but the prices you can see are for like right in your budget, um, so something that you could actually get. And you can see there's, there's some 12 volts, some 24 volts. Um, all of these have pros and cons. It just depends on how much torque you need um, and whether you can get a transistor that will transition that much uh, current. Um, again, if you can go single direction and use a MOSFET, your life will be easy. If you have to go bi-direction, um, then all of a sudden you have to be a, a little bit more careful because our H-bridges can't handle it. Um, and there are a lot of good links uh, to buy things from. I'll just find a couple others. Um, so the gold mine, uh, same deal. Uh, you know, you can go to motors, uh, you can go to uh, Gearhead Motors, another awesome site uh, with a lot of great uh, great motors and very good prices. Um, <coughs> Robot Shop also has some uh, cheap ones. I made this link go straight into Robot Shop. Um, typically you would have to go to uh, Robot Parts Motors, uh, but this link actually went straight in. Um, and they have some nice like cheap wheel motors if you're doing like a simple car. Um, so those are some of the places where you can buy uh, these things. Love, love, love um, Gearhead DC motors. They just make my life happy. Uh, so that's it for this time. Uh, come back next time and we'll learn about steppers.